Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I'm a London star. Hip hip tally ho, welcome to Jules Guides where I wander around London and tell you interesting things you may not have known already. And people often say to me, Julesy, oh Julesy, just why do you Brits talk so funny? So I decided to make a video about English idioms and expressions and where they come from. Now, the reason I'm standing here in Fleet Street is because us Brits have always had a morbid fascination for going to the toilets. In fact, we find it hilarious and we have managed to base a whole sense of humour around it. Uh, for example, uh, when I need to go, I might point Terence at the tiles or point Percy at the porcelain or indeed drain the main vein. And if I wanted to do something a little bit more solid, I might perhaps, uh, as I did this morning, uh, release a chocolate hostage or drop the kids off at the pool, perhaps. Now take, for example, the expression to spend a penny. The first public toilets were actually at something called the Great Exhibition in 1851, created by a fellow called George Jennings in Crystal Palace. Anyway, after that finished, they installed the first actual street level public toilets here at number 95, Fleet Street. The dubious pleasure of being on that location now belongs to a news agent. But the cost of going to the toilet was one penny. So you had to spend a penny in order to go to the toilet. Now before the days of flushing toilets in people's houses, they used to just chuck it out of the window, straight into the street below. Um, and that's why some of these houses along Fleet Street still have the overhanging uh, fronts, because those are the original Tudor buildings from the olden days so that people could shout Garde Lou and then chuck out their poo and it would clear the pedestrians directly beneath them uh, walking underneath and then and it would just land directly into the road. Uh, Garde Lou in fact comes from a corruption of uh, the French Garde l'eau which means be careful of the water I'm about to throw. Now did you ever hear someone say it was so quiet you could hear a pin drop? Well, the reason why I'm outside Twinings here in the Strand is because in 1706, Thomas Twining opened up the first tea room here in London. And if you notice the, the logo above there, he put that up in 1787. And that is the oldest company logo still in operation in the world. So what would happen is that when they were bidding for the tea at the tea auctions, they'd only have a certain amount of time to place their bid. So in order to time it, they'd stick a pin inside a candle and they'd let the candle burn down and when the candle reached the, the, the level of the pin, the pin would fall out. And if, of course, there were no further bids, the room would be silent and you could hear a pin drop. Interestingly, actually, in side twinings, they've got a little mini museum at the back where they've got a box that says TIP on it, which is actually the first tip jar in the world. You would put money into it to ensure promptness. So you'd put your money in the box and that would mean that you'd get served a bit more quickly. So it was to ensure promptness. T.I.P. Now take for example a baker's dozen. Why do we say a baker's dozen? I mean a normal dozen is 12 but a baker's dozen is 13. And here I am outside, well the site of uh, the baker's shop which belonged to the King's Baker which started the Great Fire of London in 1666 in Pudding Lane. Um, in 1266 there was a king called King Henry III and he brought in a law called the Assize of Bread and Ale. It has nothing to do with arse size. Uh, if you're interested in the size of arses then there are other videos on the internet which may be of interest to you but um, yes the size of bread and ale meant that if you sold short of the weight that you said you were selling then you could be pilloried and flogged um, put in the town stocks etc etc and so because everything was done by weight when a baker sold 12 loaves of bread in order to avoid incurring this penalty the bakers would often say well you know I think 12 loaves should be the right weight of bread that you've ordered but uh, I'll chuck in an extra 13th just in case so I don't want to be short of my weights hence the phrase a baker's dozen how fascinating Now, when I was a kid at school, if you misbehaved, the teacher would say, now I'm sending you to Coventry, and you'd have to go and sit in the corner and nobody would speak to you. But anyway, being sent to Coventry in general means uh, everyone ignores you and, uh, and, and no one speaks to you. Um, so the reason I'm standing here outside the, uh, the Royal Exchange, outside Bank Station, is that the, the, the Royal Exchange was first opened by a fella called Tom Gresham in, uh, I don't know, the 1500s sometime. Um, and it was intended as being a bourse, a marketplace. It was one of the first proper 
uh, established marketplaces in London. And all the city livery companies would do business here, merchants, traders would come in and sell stuff. And if you misbehaved, they'd uh, lose their permission to do business in the city. And then they'd have to go to the closest city which had a marketplace, which back then was Coventry. But I've also heard people say that it comes from the English Civil War in the 1650s. If you were a royalist, you supported the royal family, um, you were captured by the parliamentarians, they would take you prisoner and send you up to Coventry to be a prisoner, where you would be ostracised by the, um, the parliamentarian supporting locals. Now it's just after New Year and I've been overindulging like everybody else and I've decided to stop drinking. So if anyone offers me a drink, I'll tell them, ah, sorry, I'm on the wagon. Uh, meaning I'm on the wagon, I'm not drinking at the moment. And the reason we say that is because, well, here at St Giles in the Fields Church, is where the condemned prisoners who were on their way to be hanged at Tyburn Gallows back in the old days when they used to do the hangings up in uh, Marble Arch, they would stop here and the good people from the church would offer one last drink to the condemned man here at the pub next door, which in those days was called the Resurrection Gate. So they'd go for a drink, then they'd have to get back onto the wagon and, and their feet wouldn't touch the ground again until they reached the, the gallows and were dead, actually. So this would be the last time their feet would touch the ground. They'd generally be bought one drink, and if anyone said, hey, do you want another drink? They'd say, oh no, sorry, he's on the wagon. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my films, don't forget to subscribe to the channel um, where you can find lots of other videos all about London and interesting places to go and things to do. And if you want a guided tour of London, then follow the links below. You can go to my website, jewelsguides.com and drop me a line on there. And you can even buy some tasteful Jules Guides merchandise there. And uh, of course, there are opportunities to become my Patreon or even just throw me a donation on PayPal if you feel like it. Tally ho and watch out for my forthcoming video about Hampstead, which will be one of my proper longer benchmark cornerstone videos of my site.